Before Jim Henson's death, his company was behind all the amazing puppet work on the Muppets, Sesame Street, and other offshoot series like Fraggle Rock. But him and his son Brian wanted to expand on other types of series for puppets to be in. Kids television series are fun and cool, but could you do a drama and comedy as well? So in the late 80s, Henson had pitched a sitcom all about a family of dinosaurs. It never took off until The Simpsons had premiered in 1989 because no one was sure if they could make a TV series that could be like this. Family Matters and the rest of the TGIF lineup didn't exist yet. Thanks to the success of The Simpsons, Disney took the chance on the series. Dinosaurs is a combination of The Simpsons, the dysfunctional family. Don't you pick that up. I'm sorry. Give me that back. The Flintstones for its comedy in the work environment. Good morning, Ed. Morning, Sid. Married with children with the family taking advantage of the father. A sweater. I just want a sweater. And I just want dinner, and it don't look good for either one of us. And the biggest influence, Boy Meets World. Well, technically, Boy Meets World was influenced by dinosaurs because Michael Jacobs produced both series. Having the Jim Henson name behind it, plus being a Disney production, welcomed some familiar actors on the series, ranging from Sherman Hemsley playing the horrible boss of We Say So Constructions. Where well, I said, you don't need more money. Sally Struthers playing Charlene Sinclair, the daughter of the Sinclair family. She voiced Rebecca Huntingham in Tailspin. I'm sorry, Daddy. I'll set the table. Susie Plaxton, who did several characters on Star Trek TNG, Voyager, and Enterprise, played the next door neighbor, Monica. Monica de Vertebrae. I'm the real estate agent selling the house next door. The late Jessica Walters, probably most known for her voicing Mallory Archer, plays Fran Sinclair. Maybe you ask too many questions? Tim Curry and Ed Asner played key voices throughout the series. And the biggest one of the cast was Kevin Clash, who voiced and puppeted Baby Sinclair. Whoa, I'm on the floor. He, of course, was the voice and puppeteer of Elmo. Dinosaurs is just a regular sitcom show of the 90s, except being played by 10-foot dinosaurs. It's a very weird concept. A lot of kids were definitely brought in by Baby. Baby Sinclair was basically Bart Simpson. They had stumbled onto phrases that became iconic, like, eat my shorts. If you ever hear someone say, not the mama, not the mama, that came from dinosaurs. Who's the mama? Where's the mama? What I really took from it was how ridiculously funny everything was. The production stayed serious as possible in the quality. We know it's puppet work, it has limitations, but the designers would always make sure things would be authentic as possible. History-wise, the show took a lot of liberties. They would mix different dinosaurs together, regardless if they were around in the same time frame. Dinosaurs would be able to birth different species of dinosaurs. It didn't make that much sense, but the choices behind the dinosaurs they picked did. Some dinosaurs' real-life backgrounds would reflect family elements. Its look would be worked into the character's design. What's best was there was a character you always related to, regardless of age and whatnot. That's what drew me into the series. When I was young, I liked slapstick, but dinosaurs did more than that. All the stuff that we deal with in everyday life, they would always try to fit in, make a joke, or just complain how stupid it is. From infomercials, Then you'll want this beautiful 32-piece cookware set. To crappy music videos, there was always something. What set the series different was they didn't go the obvious route, like having the main character be a T-Rex. They went with all different kinds of dinosaurs that even Jurassic Park hasn't really used after five movies. Earl Sinclair, the main character, he's, if you mixed Homer Simpson and Al Bundy together, he's the teddy bear father that loves his family, but everyone likes to use up his money and steps on him all the time. He's the guy that wants to do the right thing, but tends to not care how he gets to the right thing. I got your flowers. Ragweed. It's your favorite. No! No! What? You could argue he isn't the greatest role model for kids, but the rest of the family ain't perfect either. Each one of them has their own issues. That's another thing I appreciate from the series. Most shows always do the episode where the dad has to take over for the house, take care of the kids, do the cooking. Dinosaurs also did the reverse. Earl didn't always see things from Fran's perspective. Fran Sinclair is the traditional housewife who deals with all the insanity and the nonsense with the kids, having to make food on time while trying to have a semblance of personal time to herself. But both of them would understand each other. Earl finally got how hard it was to be at home. Fran got caught up in baby's commercial money, neglected the family, and started turning into a bad person. They did go the extra step in building up the family. Not one character is looked at for only laughs. The writers tried to give each one depth 
depth, but no show is perfect. Charlene was the most underused of the main five. The issue was that she shared similar elements with Robbie, the son of the family. They're very close in age, so plots could be interchanged between them, but Robbie was the more interesting of the older kids. Charlene is basically the 90210-esque character. Not as over the top, and I didn't hate her, and she did get some fun episodes. A few of her episodes dealt with her entering puberty, so they did things around that. There was an episode of her getting her first job, but she only got a handful of stuff to do. Now with Robbie, he was my favorite character. Most kids gravitated towards Baby. I honestly never liked Baby. I found Baby annoying. Robbie's the high school guy. He's the jock, a nerd, mixed in with Lisa Simpson. Robbie's the one who's always questioning why something is done this way. He's even used as a fourth wall breaking character. Because if this is the year 60 million and three, why is next year 60 million and two? Why are we counting backwards? What are we waiting for? How really stupid some of their traditions are while he goes and makes an idiot of himself just to impress a girl. The thing I don't get is why are most dinosaurs anthropomorphed into humans, but others were kept as their old selves? No one ever explains this on the series. I guess it's time to talk about Baby Sinclair. I did say before that he was one of the main reasons why the show became a hit. Maybe because of Clash's Elmo voice pulled in everyone, or it was the constant dumb behavior the baby did on Earl. They would write anything with Baby, and Baby is his name. They even made an episode about that. Horror jokes, saving the day, Baby even became a religious icon, obviously joking on the show itself. Baby's mostly annoying, goes against rules, but did get some good moments. I think the potty training episode was the best one for Baby and Earl. They both had the same love-hate relationship Homer and Bart have, but it took a while for the two of them to really bond. For the people who are curious about the series, I need to explain the problems that happened through it. You'll notice on the wiki episode page that there are seven episodes listed after the series finale. This is the series finale. I said the show was a big hit, so the studio didn't interfere with the writing side of it, but there were several episodes that covered some stronger subjects, and they didn't really go any harder than, say, those bigger episodes in Boy Meets World, but that didn't exist yet, so around 10 episodes, depending on the year, were banned, half banned, or never aired in the US. The episodes that aired after the finale were the ones that never aired originally. I never got to see them till I got the DVD set. So when you watch it on there, they're counted as bonus episodes because of this reason. Why were these episodes skipped slash banned? All are dumb. They were just doing topical issues. They weren't saying these things were good. The whole point of the episodes were to help kids understand, make fun of things that happen in real life. But we're talking about parents who got Disney to censor deadly force on gargles because all they saw was blood and not the context. Which is hilarious because Dinosaurs also did an episode making fun of censorship where Baby was using a bad word, Smoo? And they go and ban these episodes. The biggest one to get banned on and off was the episode called Steroids to Heaven. It was all about Robbie getting addicted to Thernoroids just to get girls. His mood changed. He became horrible to everyone around him. The whole episode was all about substance abuse. I know this aired at least twice when it first broadcast and when it re-ran in repeats. I first saw the series when seasons three and four were airing. They re-aired seasons one and two, including this episode. Then after that rerun, it disappeared and I never saw it again. Trust me, I watched the reruns over and over because of the way the series ended. I thought there was more. The other episode skipped over was one about Charlene getting her adult scent, which was so stupid when they had another episode of hers about getting her tail, which is basically the puberty episode, just changed tail to breasts. That episode was okay to air normally, but this, no. The only complaint I had was that they did the same plot again. Another one dealt with Baby Sinclair's rite of passage. He had to survive with his family in the forest, which of course, Earl, Robbie, and a friend of theirs got stuck in the tar pits. The only thing I could think of why this was skipped, because they were gonna die, they didn't care after a while, so it kind of felt almost like a suicide? It's a dumb stretch. Trust me, I don't understand it. The last two I want to even cover was them making fun of amusement parks with the long lines, overpriced crap, how things were still left under construction. I think Disney was insulted. The last one was about Georgie, basically a Barney joke. 
Baby became obsessed with Georgie, so Earl dressed up as Georgie, which promptly got him arrested for copyright infringement. This got the real Georgie exposed for tax evading and racketeering. The bands, or temp bands, whatever way you want to call it, were stupid. They didn't need to happen. Some episodes do some weird stuff that you could complain about, but you got to watch the whole episode to get why they did the story. So if you want to watch the series in proper production order, use the production codes on the wiki. I think Dinosaurs is one of the few original sitcoms out there. People today are probably not going to care for it as much. We got spoiled by CGI and whatnot, but puppet work is just another form of art to tell a fun story. This series was the stepping stone for Brian Henson. A lot of his style and working under a full heavy TV productions here got him prepared when he came to help create Farscape six years later. If you're a fan of Boy Meets World and Married with Children, I think you'd also love this series as well. Thanks for checking out the review. Subscribe if you want to see more. And if you remember a movie or a show that's long been forgotten, good or bad, leave it as a suggestion below. I'm always on the lookout for obscured stuff.